In 1909, Henry Huddleston Rogers Jr. inherited one of the largest fortunes in American history. His father had spent his entire adult life building an empire from the ground up, starting with a simple oil field to building refineries and railroads, before finally merging with John D. Rockefeller to become Standard Oil. Henry Sr. had led an incredibly fascinating life, remaining modest and humble even as one of the 100 wealthiest men in the world. He built libraries, churches, schools, and donated money to influential figures such as Mark Twain and Booker T. Washington. Helen Keller's education was even paid in full by him, and while Henry Sr. lived in an outrageous mansion, he preferred to donate his money to the greater good of society and bless people by making sure they were financially taken care of. That was, until 1909 when he suffered a fatal stroke. His son Henry Jr. inherited the modern equivalent of nearly $1.4 billion, but he would have to wait to spend it. Henry Jr. had joined the New York National Guard previously, unaware of the scope of his father's wealth. Just as his time serving was coming to an end, World War I broke out. He was told he would be stationed and realized that he might never get the chance to spend his inheritance, but if he were lucky and could successfully lead as a lieutenant colonel in the field army, he could enjoy a life of luxury when he returned home. He hired the esteemed architecture firm of Walker & Gillette to design for him a palatial mansion in Southampton to be ready for him upon his return. As the years went by, the mansion was fine-tuned by artists, and the Olmsted brothers were granted carte blanche to design the landscape how they saw fit. Finally, as World War I drew to an end, Henry Jr. returned victorious from the front lines in France, and for the first time, he would see his mansion. The estate, now known as Black Point, had won several awards for its design, both from the AIA and the Architectural League. It was created as an Americanized Italian villa with creamy stucco walls below a muted terracotta tile roof. Fronting the water, sandy dunes gracefully blended with a carefully planned garden, transitioning from rustic and natural to a refined and perfectly manicured landscape. Axial vistas were planned about the pools, with every tree and shrub being perfectly placed to capture the views. Even his children, including Millicent Rogers, would enjoy the scaled-down parterre gardens surrounding their playhouse. As we return to the motor court, we will make our way around the reflecting pool to find the main entrance. Passing through the colossal, solid wood doors, we arrive in the entrance hall, carrying the exterior's finishes inside. From terracotta floors to creamy plaster walls and wrought iron handrails overgrown with potted plants, when the doors are opened, the lines are blurred between indoor and outdoor living. We will first venture into the reception room, where archways are framed by antique European tapestries. Then we can make our way into the drawing room, flooded with natural light softly illuminating the coffered old-growth mahogany ceiling. French doors could be opened on either side of the drawing room to allow the fresh sea breeze to pass straight through the house. This brings us to the loggia, doubling as a breakfast room, once again, with terracotta tiles clinking beneath our feet. The barrel vaulted ceiling and the walls below are decorated with intricate murals in vibrant colors. Though for formal meals, guests would dine below the dining room's leaded stained glass skylight. Traveling through the house, doors could be found opening onto large terraces. Making our way through the corridors, staircases slowly cascaded behind barrel vaulted ceilings. Each detail was meant not to be overbearing, but to contribute to the whole. Henry's den welcomes us in with a gentle fire warming the terracotta floors. Over time, he worked on model ships which he proudly displayed, suspended from the ceiling and hanging on the walls. As time went on, Henry's reputation began to slip. He became known as cold and ruthless, and unlike his father, he spent exorbitant amounts of cash just to show off. He purchased an additional 2,000 acres on Long Island, which he named the Port of Missing Men, a glorified hunting lodge on the water where he could race as many yachts. By the time he passed away in 1935, he had all but squandered the family fortune, leaving the modern-day equivalent of tens of millions to his daughter Millicent, who we will see more of in a future video. Shortly after his passing, the award-winning Black Point was torn down and slowly redeveloped as a neighborhood. Which room is your favorite? Let me know down below in the comment section. And while you're there, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.